So hello everyone and welcome back with another uh, edition of the OC show. This is the number two. Um, today we're going to talk about the Galaxy OC event, what went on at CES overclocking wise. We're going to yeah. check back at the Country Cup, look at uh, what the, the Rookie Cup is and then end with a very special video. Right. But, uh, but first of all, let's start with the Galaxy OC event. Yeah. You, you attended that. Yeah, one. that's it. So. Um, I went to the Galaxy event in Shanghai, so mm -hmm. it took place, uh, I think, around mid-December last year. And that was a quite big event, probably the biggest event Galaxy organized in terms of overclocking uh, ever. Uh, they used to organize that event every year, so they um, used to invite essentially Chinese overclockers as well as Koreans sometimes to that event, which is initially a gaming event. Okay, I see. So they combined gaming and overclocking and this year for the first time they invited international overclockers so it was a lot of big names invited oh um, yeah well, it was not it was not a competition with uh, qualifiers it was okay, a competition yeah. with um, where it was invite only a little bit like the Corsair event so we had SF3D there was smoke from uh, from Russia extreme addict that participated at the MOA this year and also the ASUS event in Russia there was a uh, lucky new uh, little boy OC Windforce well as Dolcon from so Thailand. So mostly the big names in the in the Yeah, I think it's pretty much all the names. Those the guys we are used to see since okay, the last I three see. years, I think three or four years even or more. So how did it go? Did it, well, it was went, it an interesting competition or Yeah, I think the competition was quite interesting in itself. The there was one funny thing which was the teams were drawn not according to uh, country of origin or something okay. like that. It was more they they drew the teams like in in soccer you would draw uh, draw, draw po pools of players or teams against each other so you had guys that couldn't speak the same language that ended up together right oh yeah that's that seems like an interesting concept in in theory but then I I, I guess in practical terms it was it, a little bit difficult for yeah, some people yeah so from what I noticed it works as long as everyone speaks English yeah if there's the language barrier is um, even if you talk overclocking or mean the same thing or point at, at the same settings you need to communicate at some point with your teammate and in tense situation like we saw with Extreme Addict and his partner it was really really hard to get well to I get remember from when I was still doing the competitions I was mm. competing together with a with PT1T and even when you speak the same language when you're at a competitive environment um, when things tense up you need to kind of know how your other yeah. team member is going to respond and I mean it's already well, a problem especially if you don't know him before right you exactly, haven't never yeah. benched with him you don't like some guys bench together already, but some never actually met before that event. And, and everyone has their own style as well. So when, when things get tense and you yeah. want to revert back to what you know is going to work and yeah, you yeah, both yeah. have a different idea of it, that can actually clash. Yeah. So yeah, most team, uh, most team prepared in a way, they um, split up the work. Mm -hmm. So one guy was in charge of uh, everything that was 3D related, okay. the other one 2D related. And at that time when the one guy was adjusting settings, the other one was taking care of temperatures, insulations, things like that. So I think that was probably the, the best way the, the team that actually won went used that, that okay, way so of doing. Well, now the, mo the most important thing, who won? Well, so initially uh, Hassan and Hero won the competition. Okay. Uh, but they um, they got disqualified like about a, a week later, I think after the after the end of the competition, because um, some overclocker that was there at the show, which wasn't one of the participants, actually got caught several times on helping them on the setup. Oh, okay, and that so was violating we don't, the rules. We, yeah, we don't know exactly what he did. Like no matter what he did, it doesn't really matter in the end. Uh, even if it's your friend or someone at the competition trying to help you, he can tell you stuff, but he cannot touch your system. Oh, okay, so, I see. And this guy was sitting at the system several times. So So the decision is definitely yeah. defendable or yeah, understandable. Yeah, the judges had no choice, right? If okay. they don't do it this time, next time someone will say, hey, this guy last time he won 3K. Okay. And yeah, yeah. So. Fair enough, fair enough. So yeah. overall, do you think so it was a great event? or? No, it was great. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So the final ranking was Lucky Noob and um, Little Boy. Okay. So Lucky Noob, which was already, I think, second at the MOA this year. Yeah, that's correct. Last last second submission. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. um, then it was Zolcon and uh, OC Windforce. Okay. So Korea again on the on the podium. And so the fourth place, which switched to the third place, it was APAC and uh, Steven Young. Okay, at least one European up there. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, no, it was pretty good event. I think um, many things can still be tweaks. You know, it's it's their first major event. Okay, maybe good. it was maybe it was a bit too big, or it, it was maybe not big enough in terms of combining the gaming with the overclocking. Like um, at that, that was, event, the yeah. main the main attraction was gaming. Like most cameras were always pointed at gaming, and there was very little explanations given to. Uh, what is happening on the overclocking side of things. That was very different from the Kingston uh, final in uh, at CES. Yep. So as you know, they did a, the, the qualifiers for the HyperX LC takeover. Yeah, true. They did qualifiers on HW Bar. Exactly. Right? And the world finals were at CES. And um, they basically um, had two booths, two suites in, mm. uh, in the Caesar Palace uh, Hotel. Yep. And on the first day, it was a gaming competition. And on the second day, it was an overclocking competition. So it was it was combined in a way that it was announced as there is gaming and overclocking, mm. but the events were definitely separated. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So and two two very different events. Oh yeah, very very much different, and not that crowded. Um, mm. Well, CS, yeah, it's if you're not on the show floor. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Peaceful. That's right. Um, but the, the 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 setup was very very nice, and I must say that it was one of the. One of the cleanest organizations I've, I've ever seen for an mm, overclocking okay. competition. The overview was there. It was still quite a crowd by the end of the competition. Everyone, like the, yeah. all the seats were, were taken. At the last minute, yeah. Exactly. The press was there as well to take pictures. And it, overall, I'm, I'm surprised, um, I'm positively surprised that Kingston would be able to pull off that kind of a high quality mm. event, even though it's only the first time that they did an overclocking yeah. competition. So that, that yeah that that was fantastic. So it's the second manufacturer after Corsair that does overclocking competition, live overclocking competitions yeah. now. And I mean the the um, the difference with, with 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 Corsair is is very how should I say very significant. It's very apparent. Like where mm. Corsair went for an invite only only get the top guys focused on world records. Yep. Kingston went more with a community approach where they said okay we're gonna do qualifiers. And the most important thing is the competition itself. It's okay, not the yeah. world records. It's not the the PR. It's not the yeah. direct exposure. It's it's more of a branding mm. exercise. Okay. Yeah, so, so um, believe it or not, but Extreme Attic was also at that competition. Oh, <laughs> and don't tell me he won. <laughs> oh, yeah, he won exactly. Yes, he won five thousand US dollars, which is okay. the highest prize a um, a person has ever won yeah. at an overclocking competition. We know that um, we know that um, at the the, the Corsair event there was a similar prize, five thousand US dollars yeah. for the Super Five Thirty Two M, but that had to be split into two yeah, for the so two teammates. This time he gets the full amount. The right? full amount. So yes. maybe maybe Extreme Addict is actually the, the only overclocker that made as much money in a year. Vivi winning was, yeah, Vivi, right? Vivi ended second, and he's claiming or he's saying that he he made quite a bit of uh, of money from overclocking as okay, well. Yeah. He was so there was selling a, boards or binning chips. Well, actually, there like was that. a there was an interesting discussion on Facebook where um, where he would say that he spent mm. yeah he spent a lot of money on binning CPUs, yeah, but, qualifying but his one stuff, yeah. his one golden CPU brought him um, he yeah, said he well over ten thousand US dollars in prize money, fly tickets, yeah. um, record. Like yeah, especially I think if you start counting flight tickets in there. Yeah. And I think yeah, VV won also a little bit of money at MOA. Exactly, yeah. So with the same yeah. CPU. Okay. Yeah, so, so I mean binning maybe maybe it's worth it, right? Yeah, for you if you take part to yeah. competitions. So yes. actually VV also broke some records at the Gigabyte suite. At okay. The CS. So, so that was a second event. Yeah. No, so nothing I, related to Kingston. Or no, no. So Gigabyte um, had um, a benching area at their suite okay, as well, yeah. and that was more of a relaxing, um, a relaxing benchmark session. Yeah. The first so day, a lot of American. Yeah. No, the yeah. first day, a lot of American overclockers joined in. It was more of an, in a U shape where everyone yeah. had their own system. And then um, further on in the, in the next couple of days, it was it was a smaller section with um, High Cookie and Dinos Twenty Two from Gigabyte kind oh, of yeah, watching yeah, over the setup, sure. and then mainly um, Vivi and Stepanzi overclocking, and they each got one world yeah. record. Stepanzi had the overall Heaven DirectX Eleven record, and Vivi yeah. had Cinebench Eleven Point Five, I think. Okay. Yeah. So that was the that was the ROI for Gigabyte. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a big event, but. You know that that's interesting. It's well, especially a, since they are doing a, they have a LC board, right? So exactly. I think it, yeah. it would not make sense to uh, to present the board and not show it on, on the code, right? But it's also it's also nice for the overclocking community that there are that kind of events, yeah. especially if they would be announced um, maybe like a month before. 
people would just fly in themselves and attend the overclock. Sure, gathering. especially if it's in the US, people living around the region yeah. could just grab the bus. Or and that, that's actually Vegas. what the what the American overclockers did with their bench house. So that oh, would be yeah, the yeah. third overclocking. Yeah, event I hear about that event. Yeah. Say so, um, they, um, I think when I say day, it's a loud silence. Who yeah. also Organized, attended uh, the? Okay, yeah. yeah. He attended the Kingston Hyperx event as a competitor, yeah. and then he uh, rented a house for okay, about fourteen yeah. days. That's pretty cool. So yeah. 14 days, Ellen 2, anyone that wants to come can yeah. join and just bench. So you have Fugger and Mike CDM and then Splave and Kingpin okay, was there yeah. as well. Oh. He brought a couple of Kingpin edition. Oh cards. yeah, true. Yeah, the card was ready at that time. Well, yeah. just ready. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they had a lot of fun and they had a lot, a lot of uh, nice score as well that they uploaded mm. later. So I think that's a, that's a very nice idea. I think it's a good initiative. Yeah. I think that's something we should see more often around major trade shows where there's overclocking yeah. going on at the trade show but everyone is free to gather, uh, gather and do something on that side I, I think it would be great if, if there is at least one bench house at every single trade show true especially I think Computex would be the yeah. the easiest one to organize it right <laughs> I think well yeah. easiest in the way that everyone comes anyway for Computex yeah. so it's usually not a problem to find overclockers around here for I think we time. should yeah we should definitely make work of that yeah, see how we can arrange place, something something like here yeah. And, yeah. So back to the online world where there is also competition. See, yeah, sure. overclocking is all <laughs> about competition. Yeah. I think this year was probably, yeah, th 2013 was the most busy year in live competitions. But I think if we count all the online competitions yeah. that happen, I think, yeah, every three weeks there's something new coming up. Usually there is always, yeah. like, there is always a competition going on. Always. If not the bigger competition that lasts for yeah. three months, like Pro C or. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the, the Country Cup is sort of, it's also a bigger competition than usual, yeah. um, but it's only once a year. Okay. And I don't know, for those that don't know it, um, the Country Cup is sort of the World Cup of overclocking, where it's um, it's mostly nation-based. Well, no, yeah. it's entirely it nation-based. Yeah, yeah. It's so, nations versus nations. Exactly. And this year was what, 40, 46? 46 countries uh, participated yeah. in the Country Cup, which is the highest ever. Uh, over 400 overclockers, which is That's the highest ever, <laughs> and over 1,700 submissions, which is the highest ever as well. So very successful competition, and very interesting to see the the, yeah. the battle at the top. Well, yeah, I like I really like usually um, country cup, especially the last days, which are probably the most interesting of all because. There's always some scores showing up, and you're like, "What? No!" Yeah. There's always <laughs> the complaints, <laughs> always the complaints about sandbagging as well. And we're not gonna get into that topic right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, that's um, a different topic. <laughs> but yeah, the country cup was very, very interesting. Um, yeah. and it was, I think, four or five countries that were really contending for for the win. It was uh, Australia, Germany, uh, Indonesia, and then you had the USA, yeah. and then uh, France. Got, France got France up there. is slowly getting better, but I think like in, the, forced, in the last think, year, in forced. the last years, we slowly see the community of friends coming back up. Coming back because yeah. France, well, they were here back in like what five years exactly. ago. Exactly, France like used that. to be a very, very yeah, big yeah, yeah, community, true. very strong overclockers. Yeah, yeah. So, well, it's yeah. cool. It's cool to see those young guys. Actually, they were there at the um, GOC event, right? Stratego San was exactly, there. Exactly. Yes. Uh, we saw Wizard T at the Asus competition. So yeah, they're coming back. Yeah. Um, so in the end, <laughs> Australia won. Yep. Mainly because they won the four uh, most valuable stages. Yeah, and they did. Um, I saw an amazing gathering. They did like they had rented a, a bench house. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's it, right? If you want to get something done, you have to get together, share Ellen to bring all the hardware together and bench for I think three or four days straight. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Bring bring some hardware, bring some yeah. booze, and then just. Gather all your knowledge and, and see what you well, can do. Well, especially come up with. for this Country Cup, since you needed to have some older stuff, right? As yeah, well. exactly. The what Country Cup is a combination of new hardware and old hardware. Mm. And it's also, um, it's also a competition where you need team members. You okay. can't. Yeah, you can't do it by yourself. No, there, there, is, there is actually there is a rule that says you, in a certain stage you need to have a certain amount of scores. Oh, yeah, true. With, a unique uh, amount of users. So if yeah. there's, if you need five scores, you'll need five people, and you'll need five different systems. So you need at least five people in for to compete in that stage. Yeah. And we we see that um, even Australia didn't manage to get the minimum amount of submissions in some of the stages. So if you want to compete as a country, the the num the first thing you need to do is to make sure you have enough people to compete. Yeah. That is the most important part of it. And then when you have enough people, then you can start focusing on quality yeah. scores. 
Yeah, and if you don't have enough, you need to actually search for extra yeah. members. Usually, there's a lot of people on HW, but that might not be part of any team or just being there, like benching in their little thing and their mm -hmm. little word. But sometimes, hey, come join the country cup. And well, that is how it. Let's I meet up and do something. That's right? how I remember it as well yeah. from in Belgium. Then now, I mean, so Australia won for the first time, and um, Germany was kind of not pissed off, but they were. They're they're uh, they're seeking revenge next year, as as That's good. That's as good. does United uh, the, the USA. So I think next year is going to be very mm -hmm. interesting as well. Um, and okay. now that we're talking about online competitions, we yeah. need to also mention the Rookie Rumble Cup. So that's the cup for the noobs, right? Yeah, that is something completely new. That's for people that have no well that just started on the butt yes. in the um, yeah. within the last three months. Yep. Um, so you said most of them are coming from XTU? Yeah, so the, the interesting evolution that we see with XTU is that it's drawing in a lot of new people, yeah. a lot of new Cause people. Because it's easy to submit or mm -hmm. I guess like it's just one click basically. But it, It's a very short benchmark. Um, you have your overclocking knobs in there and it's very easy to submit to HWBot. Yeah, and it feels probably safer I think than other benchmarks, right? But well, the, the thing with the profiles, right? Probably reassured a few of the new guys. Uh, yeah, I can try those things, and yeah, if 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 the OC fail, it's not going to break anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, I, I mean, that might be one of the reasons. But what yeah. we see is that there's a lot of new guys incoming, and we see that those guys that the people that join in, they would run next to you multiple times as well. So it's it's not like they just run it once and then quit. Yeah. They run it multiple times. They try times. to improve their score. Right? Yeah, but we see that the people, they don't use different benchmark applications. Mm. So what we try to do with this Rookie Rumble is introduce the people that come in uh, yep. through XCU to uh, two different benchmark applications, HWBot Prime and Super Pi yeah. on him. So and then the we hope that they get, yeah, we, hope they, we hope that they get inspired yeah. to run the multiple benchmarks as well. All right. So Prime, that's kind of like a hybrid, right? It, does mm -hmm. both the submission file and the screenshot, mm -hmm. and you chose SuperPi one M because it's fast. It's one fast, and SuperPi is the number one addictive benchmark. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you just run it. I think it's what six seconds, four, five, four to six seconds for the actual. Uh, the, the most of the competitors around like seven, yeah. seven and a half oh, seven, seconds. Yeah. Okay. But the the, the 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 very appealing thing about SuperPi is uh, is the the time because you yeah. can see you can see that you improve. Yeah, milliseconds. Yeah, very milliseconds, quickly. Right? Yeah, it gives you maybe the the idea of Olympic swimmer or a athlete and the one hundred meter dash, something like that. Yeah. Well, especially if you get points for your ranks, and mm -hmm. that's it. So yeah, the the, the rookie rumble is is pretty successful. So how many people now? Sixty six. Sixty six. Yeah. Right. So there must be a almost four hundred scores submitted, I guess. If everyone submits at least three scores plus a few more. So that is that is interesting, especially because we didn't really do that much of a yeah. promotion around it. Just wanted to see how it how it went, and yeah. So what about cooling for the competition? Did anyone try it in too, or those no. new guys are still on air and water cooling? Yeah. Or? most of them are on air and water cooling. And I think if we see people with nitrogen stepping yeah. in there, we'll be at the end. We're just gonna restrict it for the next cup to just oh, okay, air, yeah. water, and maybe yeah. phase change so, cooling. Yeah, probably the LN2 scores will come as sandbagging scores. And I don't know. That we'll is, see, right? it's the first cup, so we don't know if these rookie rookies can learn in three months that sandbagging is the key. But to probably success. by the time that episodes come out, we will <laughs> have find out, right? Yeah, so <laughs> you can you can check the thread. If there's a lot of angry people, that means that it was sandbagging. Yeah. Well, next <laughs> next edition will be fixed. So when does the Rookie Rumble Cup round two start? Um, round two starts on February 18. I think. Okay, so that's in the still two, two weeks, weeks from now. Yeah. yeah, so it's one week until the end of the competition, which lasted uh, for three weeks. Yep. And then there is just one intermittent week of rest, a okay. pause, and then we start again with three weeks of rumble, a Rookie Rumble. All right. That sounds good. Looking forward for it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so was this pretty much it, I think, for this episode? We have one more thing one to more show thing. you. It's a very cool video. Um, oh, yeah, right. It's a, it's a gigahertz video. Yeah, right? it's a small bit from an upcoming XTU video where we try to overclock a system on air cooling to 6.6 .6 gigahertz and 1.7 volts just to show you what would happen if you, by accident, apply those sitting in XTU. So, so no, no atomic bomb. Well, watch the video. Yeah, all right. So Bye. 
Let's watch it. See you next week. See you. Well, in a month. <laughs>